Marketing Part 1, Social Media. Um, I'd also like to welcome and thank our viewers who are watching on WCTV as well as on Facebook. Uh, Main Street Wildsworth's mission is to create an unmatched downtown experience, and that includes empowering our downtown businesses and organizations. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the economic revitalization and historic preservation of downtown Wattsworth. Um, we're going to be having a pizza arrive in just a few minutes, so whenever that gets here, everyone's welcome to get up and serve yourselves. We also have um, some cookies donated by Toast Heads. Um, Main Street Bosworth follows the National Main Street Center's trademark four-point approach for comprehensive downtown revitalization. Those four points are design, economic vitality, promotion, and organization. So tonight's seminar is a project of our Economic Vitality Committee, which was chaired in 2018 by Ron Polito, who is here this evening. In 2019, our chair is Mr. Bob Thurber, who is also in the audience tonight. The goal of tonight's seminar is to provide our downtown businesses and organizations with new and helpful tips they can apply immediately to improve their online presence. By the end of this seminar, we're all going to learn something we didn't know before. I would like to thank our sponsors for making tonight's business seminar possible. The Wadsworth Public Library, um, Stephanie Terry, one of our volunteers, Domino's Pizza, Twist Heads Micro Bakery, Ideal Graphics, WCTV, Wadsworth Community Radio, and the City of Wadsworth. I would also like to thank Mayor Lawbaugh and Service Director Robert Patrick for attending tonight and supporting our downtown. Thank you. Before we begin the seminar, I would like to tell you a little bit about our featured speakers, I-10 and Heather. I-10 Anderson is the marketing coordinator for the City of Wadsworth. She has been involved with Main Street Wadsworth since she moved to Wadsworth in 2015. She also helps to administer Main Street Wadsworth social media channels and strategy to help us maintain an active social media presence. She serves as chair of our marketing committee and is involved with Main Street's other committees as well. Her areas of expertise include social media marketing, organizational communication, planning and execution of social media strategy, creative design, and nonprofit marketing. She received her bachelor's degree in communication from Eastern Mediterranean University in Cyprus, which is an island on the Mediterranean Sea, and has taken master's degree classes in organizational and health communication from the University of Akron. She's mother to two amazing children and wife to her wonderful husband, Anthony. Kevin Denny serves as an executive consultant for Ideal Graphics in our downtown, a graphics and web design agency in Wadsworth. Kevin loves helping businesses maximize their online presence. He has a wide variety of leadership and industry experience, specifically in the areas of website design and development, search engine optimization and marketing, social media strategies, as well as an overall project management background. Kevin went to college in Canada and studied business administration, math, and computer science. He's a father of three young boys, and he and his wife love to call Wadsworth home. I and Kevin, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, much Adrian. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to see all of you this evening. Um, I tend and I really enjoy preparing for this lecture presentation because there's so much when it comes to social media. And we know we only have a certain amount of time. So we uh, poured over and spent a lot of time to, to develop something that would be helpful to all of you. But we also realize that there's going to be questions and there may be additional discussion afterwards as well. So we're looking forward to that. So jumping in right into our presentation, um, a lot of you asked actually when we, we sent out some uh, polls. A lot of you asked for help in social media, and that's why we're having this discussion tonight. But if you step back and ask yourself the question, why social media? You know, why this buzz? Why do we have to do social media? We're all too busy already, right? So why do we have to take more time to do some social media? And the reality is, and you can see it here kind of summed up in a few different bullet points, the reality is that the vast majority of consumers and people do research about a company online before visiting. And the reality of that point is that people are on social media a lot. So whether you realize it or not, they're actually taking time researching your company when they're looking at you on social media. Um, so when you don't have the proper presence online, then suddenly there is a potential problem where they're researching you and they don't get comfortable with uh, your individual business. So that's a big statistic, and that's only going to get more and more real as people are connected to their phones, as they check things out on their phones. So uh, just let that statistic sink in a little bit. 
Um, social media, another important point about social media is that it provides the opportunity to, to convey your brand and to personally engage with your customers. If you think about the concept of social media, just break that down in terms of the two words and the word social. The whole concept of social media is you have an opportunity to be social. Um, here we are, you know, in a room together being social, so it's hard to kind of connect that dot to being on a screen and being social, but even then you're still being social. When um, uh, parents are sharing their kids to their grandparents, that's a social interaction even though it's occurring on the screen. So when it comes to a business and when it comes to social media, a business has the opportunity to actually be social with people. And do people want to do business with uh, just um, nobody or a business or do they want to do business with people? The reality is on some level, and this will never change, they will want to still do business with people. Now I know we have difficulty with the bigger uh, chains out there and I know on some level we're always going to be fighting e-commerce and the Amazons of this world, but there's always going to be a segment, a large segment of society that will be interested in doing business with people and social media is an awesome opportunity to convey that. Social media is a new word of mouth, so people talk about you. So not, it's not only about you talking and engaging and listening with your customers, but it's also the opportunity for people to talk about you. And that happens all the time too, uh, where people will share um, stories about, about other businesses. Uh, I live in a particular uh, subdivision in Wadsworth and people will talk about, they will ask, like, who recommends a roofer? Or I, need, I have a leak, or I have an ele electrical issue. I, I did it myself a couple months ago, and I got a great electrician through Facebook, through friends, and so forth. So the point is, it's the new word of mouth. People will talk about you through social media. Social media also keeps you top of mind. So a uh, case in point that just happened today with me is uh, my wife follows Toast Heads, the uh, wonderful cookie maker in town. And she's been following it for several months, and she's been telling me, like, Kevin, like, since I only live nearby, and I've, I've already come to the establishment before, but she keeps emphasizing, you got to go get some more cookies. So that's what happened today. But the point is, uh, that particular business stayed top of mind with my wife, and that ended in a sale uh, to the business. And of course, another factor with social media is it's free. So those are some things to think about, about why. Um, but this is another kind of take on it that uh, I recently came across an article from Search Engine Journal about the nine benefits of social media. And I'll go through this fairly quickly. One, it's faster and easier, easier communication. So you can communicate very quickly. Um, we see that, we see that occurring in real time in the last couple of days, for instance, with the city communicating about things going on with the weather, with the roads. Communication happens quickly, and it gets right to people on their couch, in their bed, when they're looking at Facebook before they go to bed. Doesn't matter where, communication's fast. It also, uh, a benefit is networking and partnerships. And I think that's really important when it comes to local businesses, is because we have to team up, we have to work together, we have to have partnerships. And social media gives us that opportunity where we can network and partner with each other on a, on a specific and technical level, um, there are ways you can do that, and we'll get into a little bit of that tonight. Uh, you boost your organic visibility. That's another huge benefit. Um, going back to the previous slide where I said it was free, organic es essentially means it's free. So social media gives you the ability to boost your visibility online. So when people search your business, they will search, they may find your website, they'll find your social media, et cetera, et cetera. Increases your website traffic. Ultimately, the, one of the goals of social media is that it draws people and sends people to your website and sends them to more meatier th things that you may have on your website or uh, purchases or things like that, all sorts of things you may have on your website. It also is great customer feedback. A lot of uh, clients I work with sometimes are concerned that they may get negative feedback, but the reality is it's overwhelmingly positive feedback, especially if you're doing good things and doing the right thing. So uh, you get customer feedback, you get it in real time, essentially. 
and you get more of it than you did in the past uh, because y people don't really have to necessarily work hard at it. They can see a post and they can give you some comments and so forth. Number six, impress potential customers. You know, that goes without saying. You, those who may or may not be a customer, they're going to learn more about you through social media. Then you have branding, the opportunity to extend your brand, the, just the message of who and what you are. You know, that can be a confusing term, but if you really break it down, it's just who and what you are and what you stand for and what you sell and how you serve and so forth. Track your competition. This may not be as a favorable as a uh, benefit, but the reality is it does help understand what the market's doing, understand what other people are doing, and so forth. And then also user-generated content and crowdsourcing of ideas. You can just start searching some of these platforms and, for instance, uh, searching Facebook for particular industries, and you will get all sorts of uh, ideas as well. So that's the high level. That's the real, really the emphasis on why social media. Now we're going to jump in and hand the floor over to Aiten, who will be telling us more about strategy and so forth. Well, thank you, Kevin. Well, since Kevin mentioned why social media is important and all the benefits of social media, why don't we start talking about the strategy? Well, the key ingredient of the social media well is having a strategy. Without a strategy, you might be posting on the social media for the sake of posting. And then without understanding what your goals are, who your target audience is, and what they want, it will be hard to achieve uh, results on social media. One of the simplest ways to create your social media marketing strategy is to ask yourself these five simple questions. Why do you want to be on the social media? Who is your target audience? What are you going to share? Where are you going to share? And when are you going to share? It's no secret that setting uh, goals uh, will increase your likelihood of social media success. And um, you need to understand or you need to, you need to find out what you want to achieve with social media. Uh, without goals, it is hard to exactly know how well your social media strategy is performing. Clear goals will not only, will not only propel your strategy forward, but they will also serve as defined metrics when it comes to measuring your progress. Common social media marketing goals are increased brand awareness, increase foot traffic to your business, generate new leads, grow revenue, boost brand <coughs> engagement, build a community around your business, provide social customer service, increase mentions in the press, and listen to conversations about your brand. Well, for a goal to become a reality, it needs to be specific measurable, achievable, <coughs> relevant, time sensitive. Well, these are often called SMART goals. SMART goals are one of the most uh, longest lasting and most popular goal setting frameworks for businesses. Let's take a closer look at what makes a goal SMART. Specific, goals should be clear, simple, and defined. Let's take as an example a goal to grow your Facebook followers as a goal. And measurable. How will you measure your success? Double the number of your existing uh, Facebook followers. Achievable. Is it achievable or it, is it not possible within your resources? Can you realistically double the number of your Facebook followers? Relevant. A relevant goal is aligned closely to your business objectives. Does this goal support your business's objectives, values, or mission? Time sensitive, well, every goal needs a time frame. Whether it's several months or one year, just don't forget to give it a deadline. Uh, setting smart goals to which you can align your social media activity is a good guarantee of social media marketing success. Once you have a clear set of goals, you can track your key performance indicators, which we call KPIs, and metrics more accurately. Make sure to revisit your goals on a regular basis to determine if you're still on track or, it needs some eject, uh, or it, if it needs an adjusting. A winning formula is to measure, adjust, and then rinse and repeat. And of course, celebrate the success. Celebrate milestones and thank your online community for helping you get there. Post if you reach 2,000 Facebook fans. A 
acknowledge everyone who helped you get there. And pat yourself on the back because social media is hard. And it's not a marathon. Uh, it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. So don't, ex don't expect everything is going to happen right away. It will take time, but the result will be rewarding. So translate the strategy into scheduled plan using an editorial calendar is an important tool. This may include your goals for various channels, how often you'll be posting, and at what times, the type of content to be shared, messaging, and metrics. Planning ahead will help organize your promotional schedule across multiple networks. Tracking, tracking audience engagement will give you an idea of the best days and the best times for your particular audience. While having a calendar will provide structure and deadlines, you also want to post spontaneously when, it, when it's warranted, such as a relevant breaking news story or commentary or retweet. You can also use your calendar to archive your most successful content to reuse it later if it's evergreen. You can create one using Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. I prefer to have Google Sheets so I can share with my team members because then everybody can edit, work on it at the same time. But you can also Google having the social media editor calendar template. So like you can easily create your own or you can get a template and work on it. There you go, Kevin. Great. Excellent. We know we're giving you a lot of information today. That's why we have everything printed out. So hopefully if we're covering too much, be certain to go back and check those notes and so forth. But this is, uh, this is also a little bit of taking a look at the statistics, um, understanding that when it comes to, you know, what, what I can just mention, a strategy is very important. Coming up with goals is very important. And here's why. Here's the reality of it. The reality is that you can reach a lot of people. You can reach a lot of people. Looking at the market penetration of Facebook, as you can see, it's up there on the, uh, on the right, it's the blue. Now, uh, you can see it's starting to level off, but it's still, they have the penetration of 68% of US adults are Facebook users. And that's all, all over the whole country. It's probably higher here. 73% of US adults use U YouTube. And 35% of U US adults use Instagram. So you can say Instagram is not as important, but you can also, if you look at the, uh, look down here to this, this graph, you can see where Instagram is tracking from there to there quite quickly. And you can see that it has the potential to, you know, keep climbing. It's certainly more popular than Facebook among, among certain demographics and will be, continue to be more popular. The vast majority of this presentation itself, we've somewhat tailored around Facebook because if we talked about every last social media, we would be here for four hours. So, but a lot of these principles apply to all social media. But, so that just shows you there's a lot of people on these platforms and they're, you can see all the ones at the bottom, they're almost all growing. And then the second point here, another reason why it's good to put some work into this is because you have people um, spending over 11 hours a day interacting with media. A statistic recently came out. And of that 11 hours, 39 minutes on a computer, 2 hours and 22 minutes on a phone, 47 minutes on a tablet. Now that's an average, okay? So some people may prefer a tablet over a phone. It's not like that's every person, but those are the averages. So if you total that up, that's approaching, if not over four hours of time behind a phone, tablet, or computer. And a big chunk of that time, you know, they're doing that motion of the thumb on the, you know, uh, going through social media. So again, that underscores all that we're talking about here. So now we're going to jump into the next part, and I can will take over and kind of start to break down how to actually jump into a, a Facebook business page. Well, if you haven't won Facebook page for your business, we are going to explain in detail. If you already have won a Facebook page, this could be a reference as a checklist for your page. So to create a Facebook page, you can either go to www.facebook.com slash pages slash create 
or you can simply go to your own profile, hit create, and then drop down, click on the page. Well, then there will be, uh, there you will be asked to choose if you are a business or brand, or community or public figure. If you are a local business, we highly recommend uh, choose local business under the category drop down. And then you fill out your address, phone number, and then description of your business. If there is parking, all those little details, don't forget to fill out and then hit continue. And then there you have your Facebook page. And first, let's fill out this link. You will pick a Facebook profile picture. Make sure this is something that is recognizable with your business. And then there is the uh, cover picture. I, li I like to call it as billboard. You can use your marketing materials there because that is the first thing that people will see right away on their uh, either device or um, on your mobile device or the laptop. And then there is a call to action button, CTA, which is right <coughs> under your cover photo. And then you can click on it and choose the link for the call to action to direct to such as your homepage, a landing page, or a video. And it could be as simple as send you a message or contact you with phone. And then here, this is, I find it's very important creating a username for your page because this, user, this username will be used as your Facebook URL or vanity URL to help easily find people and remember, to help easily find people easily will find your page and then remember your page. You will have like 50 characters uh, come up with a unique name, not being used by other businesses and uh, keep your pages unique URL handy because you will use them again when you begin pr cross promoting your Facebook page on your website, blog, or other assets to get more Facebook likes. And then once you create your username, instead of having, if you see on top, instead of having www.facebook.com slash gazillion numbers, it's going to be as simple as www.facebook.com slash your user's business name. And uh, this will also be used as search engine optimization keyword. So when people search this on Google, your Facebook page will pop up right away. And since we covered how to create a Facebook page and then all these little details to make it look presentable and ready to grow on the social media, why don't we just talk about little bit settings and then I would like to highlight page role, which I find very, very important because when it's, when it's time to add people to, as a team member to your Facebook page, you can assign with different roles. And then this is on the settings and then the page roles and then there you go, before you add them to your page, you can assign them either as an admin, which can manage all aspects of your Facebook page as an editor, editors can ha have the same permission as admin, just what, but one difference is they cannot assign page roles to your Facebook page. Moderators can send messages, respond to, and delete comments, but they cannot publish as the page, only as themselves. They do, ac they do have access to create ads. And advertisers, just as found, advertisers can create ads and view insights. I think this is very important, especially if you do not know how to create ads for your business on the social media and you know someone who can create ads for your business, but then you do not want to assign that person as an admin for your business page. You can only assign them as an advertiser who can create ads for your business page and then track and measure the insights of that ad for you. And then the analyst role, analysts don't have any publishing power whatsoever, but they can see which admin published a specific post and view insights of it. And then live contributor only can go live for your business page. And notifications, I hear they either get too many notifications or they do not get at all. So you can go to your settings and then notifications and then you can decide how often you want to go notifications, how, which way you want to get, you can either receive a text message, you can receive an email 
or you can just see it on your Facebook page. And then you can change the uh, activity time from 12 to 24 hours as well. Well, setting up a business profile on Instagram is way easier than setting up a business profile on Facebook. All you have to do, if you have a Facebook Instagram account, go to settings on top and then hit turn your, um, just right here, switch to business profile and voila, you're done. All you have to do, put your address, put your phone number, and then uh, add your website on your, in your bio. And then you wanna cross, you wanna be able to cross post, right? Once you put something on the Instagram, you don't wanna do the same thing for the Facebook. What you can do, come to your Facebook settings back again, there's an Instagram, and then you can add your Instagram account credentials. That way, once you post something on the Instagram, that will be automatically be posted on the social uh, Facebook. However, you cannot do the same thing for the Facebook. So on the Facebook, you can only post it for the Facebook, you cannot post it for the Facebook. But the ad that you create for the Facebook can also be published on the Instagram if you link those two together. You don't have to pay separately. Why don't you talk about content a little bit? <laughs> That's good. Content, content, content. So far, uh, well, coming off of what I kind of just said, um, you know, setting up a business page, it may seem like a lot, but it is quite easy to do. I actually did it this morning uh, down in Ashland, you know, with a client. It, you start, it prompts you certain ways, and all, we gave you a ton of helpful information, so hopefully you find that helpful, and there are some important points there that were referenced. All right, content. It really boils down whether, it doesn't matter whether it comes to what's on your website, whether it comes to what's on your social media, it boils down to content. Relevant and engaging content is key. And uh, frankly, um, you know, quantity is not as important as quality. Uh, so it's, Sometimes people got like get stuck in a rut. They ha have to like post every day or something like that. Keep posting. Frankly, Facebook like monitors the fact that people may not be as engaged with it and they'll show you less. So the reality is you want relevant and engaging content. Uh, you want to be able to engage people. If you're just blasting them with the same stuff over and over and over again, that's not engaging for, uh, for certain. And really, it's not relevant it's the same, if it's the same stuff to over and over again. So, and there are all sorts of things you can post, whether it's photos, uh, videos, you can do slideshows, you can, do, you can go live, all sorts of different <coughs> things. Um, like I said before, remember that this is social media, so you want to think in terms, and I tend to have some good uh, slides coming up about how you and wh what you construct and why. You can come up with different creative content. This may take a little bit more effort, so sometimes this is more difficult, but infographics, live videos, giveaways, those types of things can be very, very effective. And like we mentioned earlier, um, you know, kind of keep an eye on what others are doing. Keep an eye and see what's successful and kind of build off of that. So that's the what of the content. What about the when? Time of day is important. Uh, it really depends on your audience. Uh, there are some clients where it may make sense to do it during the day. Um, social media, generally speaking, the peak is between like 5 to 7 to 8, and then it's to 9 sometimes and peaks off. Again, it depends on the audience. Some of the uh, uh, insights and accounts that I work with, that's the general trend there. But that's not necessarily always going to be the case. It depends on your audience. It depends on who's coming to your site, who's coming to your social media, and why. Um, and here there's a little bit of trial and error, so you may need to see uh, you know, what works and what doesn't. It, it's, it's like any type of uh, other communication, email, you know, they have guidelines on when you should send it, social media is similar, and a couple of Google searches can give you more details. But really, the reality is understand your audience and then build off of that. So just to give you kind of a couple of examples of 
different content. These were two pieces that I worked with uh, and that were engaging and fun. The first one on the left was uh, with the Wadsworth Municipal Airport this summer. Um, and this was, you can see, it's kind of a bird's eye view of Wadsworth. And this is a case in point where, you know, in some cases, it's not necessarily always specifically and perfectly planned. But um, I was uh, in one of the hot air balloons, and it was the Balloons Over Wadsworth event. It was a very popular event, and that can be its own discussion. But the point is that I decided, and I was thinking about it, frankly, uh, leading up to that point, that I was really going to try and go live. Um, the unfortunate part is right by the airport, I couldn't because there were so many cell phones there that like the networks were, the cell towers were crashing or something was going on that too many people were engaging with social media. But the fact that I was in the air balloon and I was leaving, um, it worked soon thereafter, I think going over 57 or so, and then I was able to film the whole thing over Wadsworth. And that was one of, if not the most engaging uh, video that was, um, that was on the Wadsworth Municipal Airport Facebook page. It wasn't super special. It wasn't necessarily professional in the sense that it was, wasn't professionally filmed. It was spur of the moment. But it, it was something that people you know, really related to. Um, so that's kind of just an example of uh, how it can be an engaging and relevant. And of course, that could lead to more good things for the airport and time and of course with that balloon event. Uh, here the, on the right is a different type of example of more of a giveaway. Um, and the, the font is going to be hard to read up there, but you can probably see it in your notes and see some of the strategy used there. We could have a whole lecture on this, I suppose, or a discussion on it. But uh, the point is with this particular post, we tried to make it engaging. This is Bauman Orchards, which is a company that, of course, sells apples and fruits and all sorts of different delicious um, fruit. And so the giveaway was not only to like and share and that type of thing, but it was also to get them to talk about their favorite fruit and vegetable. So that served multiple purposes. That was engaging. That literally probably got some of their glands going. They're thinking about, I think it was like uh, July. So we're talking probably past strawberries, thinking about cherries, about to go to corn. And so you're getting all these people to think and talk about your product, and that ultimately, you know, let's just go down to Bauman's this weekend and grab some fruits and vegetables, you know. So think about those things. These are just some two very different examples, but it just gives you a sense. And here's another one, too, um, you know, where this uh, is from Toastheads Micro Bakery. And what's neat about this is uh, where it says we'll be open 9 a.m. to noon Saturday. Don't let a little snow keep you from getting your toast heads fixed. Hurry in before the shelves are all empty. So here he is kind of playing off of the weather and, of course, delicious cookies, which we have some here today. So who can say no to those? But So that here's an example where you're still being creative and engaging and trying to get the people where they are. They're worried about the snow, but they want some warm cookies and so on and so forth. So I hope that helps in that regard. And uh, I will hand it back over, and I tend we'll talk more about posts. Yes, thank you. Well, we talk about content, what kind of content that we would like to use, but why, how to post on social media is also important. Well, before you post something on social media, do you want users to visit your website? Do you want them to spread the word and share your content? Or do you want to encourage comments that build community? Basically, you have a goal for each of your posts. And then be engaging and interactive. There are several ways you can engage your followers, and here are the most common ones. Asking questions, using photos or videos, sharing compelling links, irresistible giveaways. That is also one of the biggest paid and then offering coupons and discounts. And then here, keep it short and as compelling as it can be. Because Facebook has an algorithm. The more word you post, the less likely your organic reach is going to be. Unfortunately, Facebook has to take on it. And if you keep it short, you will reach more people. And a compelling message is one that will likely catch your audience's attention 
and influence them to read further. And yes, you don't have to sell, sell, sell every time. Every post shouldn't be about promotional. There has to be a good balance between post and promotion content and offering a value-added content. What is value-added content? It is relevant information that your target audience would find useful or interesting and help develop your community. Your posting strategy should be 70-30 ratio, mix of value-added content and promotional content. <coughs> but you can also be creative, share something relatable, uh, value-added content, and then tweak it with your, what you offer a little bit on the bottom. And hashtags used with your posts. Hashtags are very important on the Instagram, but it doesn't have that much importance on the Facebook. What is a hashtag? Hashtag is a keyword or phrase preceded by this hash symbol written within a post or comment to highlight it and facilitate a search for it. By including hash marks in your post, it can be indexed by the social media networks so that it can be discoverable to everyone even if they are not your fans, if they are not following you. So right here on the Instagram, I'd like to mention a little bit because on Instagram, people can actually follow hashtags. So once you put something on the hash, uh, with a hashtag, for example, Studio Wildwork, whoever is following Studio Wildwork hashtag will also see your post. So you, that could be your marketing uh, selling point. You can engage or interact or impress more audiences and bring it to you as a whole. <coughs> and bakery, I put that, who doesn't like to see delicious things? Mm -hmm. If you're not following it on Instagram, please do so. They have some good things there. And proper hashtag use. If you are using hashtags for their intended <coughs> purposes, which is categorization and discovery, don't string too many words together with a single hashtag. On most networks, if you're using a hashtag on a public account, anyone who does a search for that hashtag can find your post. And please don't hashtag spam, hashtag with, hashtag, hashtag. Avoid over tagging a single post or adding them to every word. And then use hashtags only on posts relevant to your topic. Trying to get attention by using a mismatch between the content of your caption and hashtag use won't do any favors if people are annoyed. And we talk about how to post, we talk about use of hashtag, and here Kevin is going to mention some of the tools that might help making your content more creative. Okay, so I know we're uh, beginning to run out of time and we wanted to leave some time for questions, but uh, we should uh, discuss this ever so briefly. Um, so one of the things that the beauty of all of us having phones and the ability to take pictures and share content uh, and take videos and go live, that's all good and it makes it easier because we don't have four hours a day to allot to social media posting. Um, but there's another level that should be considered um, appropriately in the right context, and that's uh, you know, developing the branded content a little bit more and utilizing tools a little bit more to help with that. Now, this is not something that's big or overwhelming, but um, you know, if you want to, you know, have a little bit more of a design to your posts, if you like to make them look a little bit more professional, you have tools at your fingertips. And these are two that I uh, outlined and highlighted here. There are others out there. Um, Spark is a made, by, made by Adobe. The cost is $10 per month, so it's not particularly expensive. What I like about it is that you can load in your logo, uh, load in your colors, so your particular colors, uh, load in your fonts if you want to. You do that once, and then you develop a couple designs, and it doesn't have to be fancy. You can just you know, put your logo in the bottom right, 
uh, with maybe a banner or, or you know, you, you can just do the logo. Uh, but what the beauty is that once that template's made, it's really easy. You can just drag and drop a picture in there and then you have another post where it looks a little bit more official. That's not necessary all the time. It's not necessarily applicable all the time. Uh, but it does give you that extra level of polish that could be necessary and or valuable depending on you know, some of the questions that I tend to ask in terms of why you're posting, who you're posting to, purposes for it, and so forth. Um, Canva is a great uh, uh, tool as well. They have some awesome templates there, a lot of free templates where you can utilize and you know, tweak it a little bit. It's very drag and drop friendly. So um, whether it's on your phone or on your computer, you can just kind of play around with it and you're not gonna break it and it's gonna still look good usually. And uh, they have a free version, which is great. You can get a lot done with the free version. But then they're kind of similar to Spark where if you want to start utilizing some of their features with logos and so forth, there is a little bit of a charge. And then some of the templates can cost. But for the most part, these are tools that are either free or inexpensive. And there are others that are out there that really help you uh, on the design end of things. Because that's, that's an important part to have your presence look good and so forth. So um, like I said, there are, are different tools out there. But these two are the big ones. And they're both our favorites. So we thought we would share those with you. Um, I think we have until we have about at least 10 minutes. So um, do, are there any questions? Uh, we'd like to kind of throw the floor open to questions, whether it's uh, what we talked about or what we didn't talk about. Um, we didn't want to have too much content and then not have time for questions. So uh, perhaps something that we didn't cover that you'd like to hear about, we do have time to cover that, or something we did cover and you want to hear more about. Um, Please don't be shy. Yes? Um, a few questions. Um, uh, one of them, you mentioned that you'd recommend uh, doing a local business page versus a, a general one. Mm -hmm. What's the difference, I guess? I can do one. Oh, for your business profile page? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think it is important when they search your business page online, instead of just seeing your name, your business name, they will also see your logo or a product or your service that is very related. So that way your visibility is going to be higher, you will engage better, and then you're also, um, go visual is important for so many people. You will be recognized with your logo when they see on the side of the screen as well. So, so can you change it if you have it? Sure, oh, so you can sure. Just, it's like an you, this is not like, you, this is what you have to do. This is something that has been suggested or offered, especially, well, you already established some sort of growth, but if you're a new business, you haven't done your social media yet, and this is your first time doing it, you're creating something, you want to start with your, your logo. <clears throat> I think with the, um, to your point, or to your question about changing it, you can make changes. Um, so if you set it up a certain way and then you need to change it or you need to, like even with the settings, we covered the settings a little bit, but there's a lot more different tabs that we didn't cover. So you can add different areas to your business page, um, but it, it is important to uh, set it up correctly. But if, if you don't, you can always go back and change it. That's the beauty of it. There's really not much that can, can't be changed. Um, there's a few difficulties I've run into at times where, like, for instance, there were a business page, um, a separate business page was developed, and then they lost accounts for it, and they started another one. And then to try and merge those two, that's when you run into difficulty. You can't like merge all the likes and those types of things. So there are some challenges that can't be undone. But in terms of setting it up like you described, or if you thought you set it up differently, you can make some changes.
going to mention about ads, creating Facebook ads, how to look at your insights, how to measure your metrics, and then we will also talk about uh, claiming your business on Google. But I would like to a little bit mention about how important it is those things. It is very important if you can boost it because, unfortunately, business of Facebook prefers pro profiles than business pages. If you want to have an, if you want to have more organic, more more reach, you can you you should use those things. And then it's super cheap, like you can budget it very fair, cheap price, then using something else like other print materials comparing to that. And then you can put a time frame, you can put a duration, and you just hit post and then it will work itself. You don't have to do anything else. I highly suggest posting. I think this is one of the easy and then cheap way to put yourself up especially if you're creating something, if you're very new to this uh, online uh, community. But um, it's, I think within your marketing budget, you, you, you gotta put it in there and decide what is best for you. And then you have to try your audience as well. You have to see what is your target audience for that. All right, I'm going into very, very yes. deep right now. Yes, yes. I suggest boosted. <laughs> It's, uh, it's very, the beauty of boosting is it's very inexpensive. Yes. Um, and the beauty of Facebook is it's very, it can be very geo-targeted and very targeted, as you've probably seen with like ages, geographies, and so forth. So that's, that's what's nice is you can drill down to a particular area. I think all of what, what was covered here still applies though too. So from a strategic perspective, you want to think through which posts you boost. Um, and some some of your more valuable posts, you may want to consider boosting more compared to others, or ones that are you know, just sharing an article you wouldn't necessarily boost. So, so you kind of have to weigh it all, and it's a little bit of a trial and error too. Um, but boosting things, particularly at the right time, can really, um, you know, a post can take off, if you will, on some level. So it should be done. And uh, we'll talk more about it next time. But it's uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's it's great for many reasons. But then it's you should still just you still want to measure yourself. All the, like the, the goals and so forth. You want to measure and assess, and not just fall in love with the numbers Facebook is giving you. Keep assessing and see what's actually working, and then make adjustments. Yeah, this is kind of, my question was along the lines of one that he just asked. So if it's coming in the next session, that's fine. But it, the post boost versus the ad, and when it's right to use the boost and when it's right to use an ad, we kind of struggle with, okay, this is cheaper, but is that as effective, or should we be using an ad here instead of boosting? So there's a science behind that. Yeah, that we'll, we can cover that more next time, but the long and the short of it from my experience is boost, boosting is easy, simple, can get the job done um, for, in, in some cases, if you go into the ads, you'll see like there's different reasons for ads and so forth, So and then you have more bells and whistles there and more knobs and things to change, so it quickly can get overwhelming too. So. It, it, it comes back to, <coughs> to uh, purposes, budget. If you're just trying to raise some awareness and just get your post a little bit more out there, then boost can be simple. If you're larger and you have an ongoing advertising budget, then you really have to look at it like it's a whole advertising program, and then you want more tools. So it's that's my summary. I don't know if I thank you any other additional comments. But yeah, well, with the create an ad, you can also put that ad on the Instagram. Unfortunately, with just boosting your ad on the Facebook, it's not going to Instagram. Because once you link those two, you want to get the best of the money that you put it on. And if it's on the two platforms at the same time, that would be the best way to approach. And then you can also do split test. You can do brand awareness and an engagement, and then you can see which type is working best for you and for your target audience with creating an ad instead of posting. Because when you create an ad,
there are so many other factors comes in together that you can't play with it easily, and then you can edit it in a continuous way, and then you can see if it works for you, and then you can also do <coughs> that for the future. You can do the same ad, same uh, settings for your future ads as well. But yes, we will talk about it more in details in our next seminar. Other questions? Yes. So, if this is, everybody wears hats, right? So, if, if the hat you're wearing is you're, you're doing engineering, so this may not be for you uh, to, to manage this every day. Are there people who do that? And if they do, what would you expect to pay for that? But you want content, whatever, three times a week you want. You have videos, da 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 da. What, I mean, I wouldn't have a clue where to find those people other than to stay in front of me. Uh, and what would you expect to pay? Or is that, people don't do that? People do do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah there are a variety of firms do it, uh, whether it's locally or even like in Akron. Uh, there are um, various packages and so forth. Um, it, it really just depends engaging them and seeing what they offer. Uh, you can have some sense that our company, Ideal, does some of it. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a variety of different levels of offerings where there are some companies in Akron that do social media full time. But you know, that starts to get expensive and that's because it's, it's a monthly ongoing um, sure. uh, contribution that they, are, uh, that, that they are doing. So um, in terms of more specifics, in terms of cost, I think you just have to engage and, and sure. figure that sort out. out okay. Yeah, because it's not, and it's it's a it's a matter of what can you provide and what can um, because in some cases, for instance, you can provide photos still. Um, in some cases, you can provide sources of content. So it may just be you need somebody to just do the posting for you, and that can be fairly inexpensive. If you need somebody to generate the content, then you have to figure out who's going to generate the content and how they're going to do it. Firms do the whole thing themselves. Um, and then, but there's also different ways where you can do bits and pieces. Yeah, we would generate the content, in other words, small videos for it, yeah. but how to get it onto this, wouldn't have a clue, so then you can send that to them. And, and, that, can, and that, can be, that can be done fairly fluidly and fairly inexpensively because you're doing a big chunk of the work, and in, in that case, you just need somebody to get it up there. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? pretty quickly and um, so I would if I were you I'd kind of keep an eye on it and so if you replaced your question with instead of saying Instagram instead of Snapchat I would agree with you 100% there's no real business application there it is a lot of young people Instagram though is changing that demographics are changing and uh, people in the definitely like 20s and 30s people are actually not using Facebook as much, in some cases, at all, and they are using Instagram. So um, if you get older in that demographic, it's probably going to be less so. Um, when, if you're, you know, you've gotten onto Facebook, you're older, you join the grandkids and so forth, you may not switch to Instagram at that point, um, but that middle section, the, the middle demographic, um, I think there's a lot of potential there. And frankly, if you look at Facebook, Facebook bought Instagram. You know, and Facebook obviously has some of its own issues, I, I suppose you could say. Um,
but you just watch what the industry is doing and that helps you connect some dots too that uh, you know there's there could be something here so that, that's my thought I Jen, do you have any just to add one thing just being able to follow hashtag on the yeah. Instagram will put you in other people's radar even though they are not following you like if they want to come visit Wadsworth if there's a hashtag Wadsworth if they want to search it on their Instagram and find you and do something at your store and then contact you stop in so just for that reason I highly encourage businesses to have Instagram because when you do cross posting you will basically only be posting on Instagram that will go to your Facebook too so like you're not going to do the double work yeah so yeah that connection is really important so if you figure out the connection then you realize it's not more work it's just you get the opportunity to, to reach both audiences All right, any other questions? Okay, well, thanks for coming. Hopefully it was helpful, and uh, hope to see you again next time.